Hello there. Yeah, it's me. Just working in the old uh, comic book news lab. And today we're going to review The Invisible Woman. Welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today, let's talk about uh, The Invisible Woman, number one. It's written by Mark Wade. Uh, with art by Mattia de Iulis, I-U-L-I-S, who um, I'll admit I've never heard of before, but I really, really like. So um, the Million Dollar Comics cam is out of action today, but uh, let's go to the next best thing, which is an online preview. So uh, let's take a look. We've, first of all, right off the bat, you got a beautiful cover by Adam Hughes. Now, Adam Hughes knows how to draw a lot of things, as, but especially the ladies uh, and the interior artwork while you know not of uh, Adam Hughes caliber is somewhat reminiscent uh, and and not bad at all I'm really a fan of this artwork um, the story now you're looking at it you're not seeing too much uh, invisible woman super action yet but in reality you are because uh, this character that you see right there actually is Sue Storm or Stormy as she's known so um, the story takes place uh, 10 years ago, which were, uh, which, you know, in Marvel comic book quasi time means, you know, not long after um, Sue Storm first became the Invisible Woman, when the Fantastic Four first got their powers. And the idea here is that uh, Nick Fury has uh, recruited Storm to do some um, spying behind the Red Curtain. Uh, you know, her powers are obviously are perfect for a spy and maybe she's doing some um, repaying the government for having ripped off a rocket ship that got her powers in the first place. I don't know, something along those lines. Um, so but what did I like about this? I liked the simple spy story. I loved the artwork. I liked, I thought the cover was fantastic. Uh, it had some really nice, nice little character moments. Nothing overall uh, too incredible uh, about um, nothing brand new we haven't seen before for Sue Storm, um, except for this spy angle, which I really liked. And it ends on a nice little cliffhanger uh, that I'm not going to show you of stuff that we're going to see next week. Now, why did I choose this book to review, right? Um, this is a week full of comics. I got, I think, seven DC comics and only one Marvel comic. This was the only one. I didn't have any on my subscription that came out this this week. So I looked at it. it looked like a nice, um, a really nice cover. Obviously pulled me in. It's a number one issue. I'm trying to buy as many number one issues now as possible to review for this channel so that you, uh, the comic buying public, knows how to spend your money. Um, this one is worth it. I'm going to sign up for this. I'm going to subscribe to this as long as the quality stays this high. Is this a limited series? Is it an ongoing? I think it's probably a limited series. It doesn't say. I think in reality it will end up being a limited series. A book like this usually doesn't last too long, but I'd love to be pleasantly surprised. Looks like Marvel's putting some oomph behind the FF again in preparation for the cinematic relaunch. Maybe finally somebody can do the Fantastic Four um, correctly, right? That would be nice. Uh, so, uh, what do we give uh, this issue? Let's let's talk about it on our new rating scale. So, okay, it's a number one issue, so I view it through that lens. Does this comic make me want to come back and read the next issue? Um, the answer is yes. It wasn't, it's not a screaming, I've got to know what happens next, um, but it is a solid, fun read with really great art, well written and well paced, um, featuring characters that I like. So um, I gave this one a 7.9. Now that's pretty high for a Marvel book these days, and especially for something that's you know done that's not create owned by the creator. It's not done by like a single cartoonist. That's usually my very favorite stuff. Um, there was some. Uh, in contrast, probably my favorite book that I've read that came out this week was uh, the new issue of Criminal by Ed Brubaker, uh, and 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 that one, a book like that, rates in the low nines just because of the sheer quality of the creative team and the vision. This as a corporate book, though, seven point nine is very high. It's the highest I've seen for a Marvel number one in a while. Mark Wade's got a solid track record. Uh, this art is 
very uh, readable, fun to look at, and uh, I hope for good things in the future for uh, The Invisible Woman. And hey, thanks for watching this video. You know, I really appreciate all the support, and if you haven't already, please click on the subscribe button, uh, and like this video, and leave a comment uh, if you have any thoughts about uh, this issue or any other issues that I should review. And thanks again for watching.